Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar, Family Communication, specifically for pre-K through second grade. We are talking about all the awesome things you can do with Seesaw to support family communication inside your classroom. So thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy lives to join us here today to learn a little bit more about Seesaw. Um, I'm Angela, and if you've joined our any other webinar, you may have heard of me before, but I taught kindergarten for 15 years. I had five iPads in my classroom, and I now lead the community team here at Seesaw. So you can connect with me on Twitter, if you would like, at Mrs. Gadke. I'm really excited to be here today talking all about great things you can do with Seesaw to support family communication. Um, the plan for today is we are going to actually talk about how you connect families when you are starting with Seesaw. So we'll kind of just go through a couple logistics quickly if you haven't yet connected your families. We're also going to talk about some time-saving ideas for communication. We all love that, right? And we're going to have a little, um, some examples where we talk about where you might share something to the journal versus um, the inbox, which would be messages and announcements. And then I'm hoping to have lots of time at the end for questions. So I told you a little bit about me, so I'd like to get to know you just a little bit. So I'm going to launch a poll, and you can actually respond just by tapping on the screen right now. What's your role? So maybe you teach pre-K or kindergarten. For those of you in Australia joining us, I know there's there's a, a few of you um, that would be your potentially prep uh, grade level. First grade, second grade, you would compare that to year two and three. Um, but go ahead and choose to the best of your ability what maybe fits with you and what you most closely align with, and then we'll kind of share those results so everyone can kind of get a peek at who is here live today. Um, I have another question I want to ask you. It just helps me get to know you a little bit more. What's your experience level with Seesaw? So I'm always curious, maybe you're brand new and this is something you are just trying for the very, very first time um, in your classroom. Maybe this is something you did a little bit last year or you're already using Seesaw all the time but thought, I actually wanna really focus on the communication aspect this year. That might be you as well. So go ahead and just tap the screen. Again, looks like we've got a great mix here today. So I'll share those results with you so you can kind of see who else is here with you live. And of course, we welcome everyone that is joining us today via the recording as well, because we always offer those. And one last question, I'm always curious, um, knowing the context of what we're talking about here today, have you connected families to Seesaw yet? So maybe you are here thinking, oh, this is this is going to be what kind of pushes me to get them connected because I want to understand it. Or you've already connected your families and are here to learn more as well. So awesome. Looks like we've got a good mix there, too. So yay. All right. So thanks for participating in those polls. We're going to get going into our content. But I also want to let you know, too, if um, because you registered for this webinar, you will get the recording sent to you via email automatically. If you're watching the recording, um, you just know that if you register for our webinars, you do get the slides sent to you as well. So, all right. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. So what makes Seesaw different from other apps that you could potentially use for family communication? Really, um, my, my three kind of big things are really the student engagement factor. Whoa, you're getting to see my whole desktop here. Um, the student engagement that Seesaw provides for you and really ease of student use. So you can see here to the left, just a little image that says your child just posted in Seesaw, which I think is a big difference from a lot of other tools that are out there that are more um, teacher, you know, teacher tools. You'll also notice tons of time saving communication for you, the teacher, and also these great visual updates, translation features, and also rich attachments for families. And you'll get to know a little bit more about that as we get going in the webinar, because we'll talk about adding notes or audio or video and things like that. So let's get going. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to go through a couple slides to talk about how you connect families 
to Seesaw, and then I'm going to just do a live demo quick. So for about half of us here today that don't, more than half, 58% of us that um, are here today live that haven't connected families, I want to make sure you know how to actually do that. And if you have already connected families, this will just be kind of a quick review, and I'll probably sprinkle in a couple little tidbits as well. So when you are in your Seesaw class, on the bottom right, you'll notice this um, plus families button. So you can tap there. And once you do that, the very first time you're going to be asked to turn on family access. So as you know, nothing is shared outside of, you know, you really control who sees the content in Seesaw. So there's no big surprises here. So once you turn on that family access, remember that um, family members only see posts that their child is tagged in or posts that the teacher adds to everyone from the journal view. So keep that in mind as well. Even when you turn on this access, you know, they're not magically just going to be connected with you turning on that access. There's a follow-up step here that you need to do. And what it is, is you can print paper invites to send home or you can send um, a, an email to families and we'll kind of go through both of those examples here um, in just a moment so this is just my reminder to get into the live demo of what this looks like because i think sometimes when you're seeing slides and you're thinking but how does this actually look um, it might look a little bit different so here i am i'm in a kindergarten class now i apologize a little bit you might be thinking angela you've got like five tabs open and you've got this other screen going on that's because over here I'm actually signed into Seesaw on the family app. So that's actually on an iPad. Um, so I wanna have that available to show you later. But in this screen right here, I'm signed into Seesaw on my computer as a teacher. So I wanna be able to show you both of those views as kind of to show you a couple things. Um, so as a teacher, again, I'm gonna go to the bottom right. I'm gonna tap this plus families button. So when I tap that, now this class I've already invited families to. So the first time you do that, that's also going to let you know to enable family access, which we talked about. Now, I prefer for the pre-K through second grade level to send home these paper invites. For me, that was just the easiest way to do it. You can also send the sample email home. So I'm going to click on this button just to show you what that looks like. Basically, you need to copy this entire message and you can just hit this copy email and you can paste that into whatever your email program is. Some people think, oh my gosh, I've got to put all my family's email addresses into Seesaw, not at all. Um, so this is already modified for you to, you know, it has your name in here, it has your specific link to your, you know, the, the, your Seesaw class. You can also choose the language here as well. So that's, that's an option right there, which is to, to do the email. Um, again, print paper invites, and again, these can be printed in all these languages here, but when I tap this print paper invite button, Seesaw does all the work for you. So we're creating the invites for you. You don't have to do, you know, it's great. It's just a little, little like, magic little elves are working behind the scenes here. So the thing I want to point out is each invite has the student's name at the top. So make sure when you get ready to send these home, you're actually sending home Avis with Avi. Um, and Karina gets Karina's and whatnot. So these are all of them for your entire class. Each of these QR codes is different. So it's unique to that specific child. So make sure it gets home with the correct child. And then these are all the instructions for families. Basically, it's just gonna say if they wanna get CISA on a smartphone, get the family app. If you wanna connect via a web browser, this is the link that they go to. So one of the things I want to show you the difference when you send this home, and for those of you that have already connected families, you may have experienced that. So if your families, once they get this, if they connect to Seesaw by just getting the family app and scanning this QR code, there is not an approval process that you have to go through because basically you have hand delivered this note to them and it's only accessible to them because they have the code for their child. If your families do this option from the computer and they go to the web browser, I'm just gonna click on this link so you can see actually what it looks like. They will have to select their child's name from the list. So basically, once they select their child, it's going to come to you for approval so you confirm, oh yeah, that is the family of that child so that they're making that connection to that specific child, okay? So that's as easy 
easy peasy, right? To get your families connected. One other thing I want to show you. So what I have typically, what I typically do is I actually give these to families before school starts, um, and they're connected to Seesaw pre day one at school. Now you might be thinking, well, school's already started, and I don't have families connected yet. That's totally fine. You can, you know, I I feel like another great time is if you do a curriculum night or a parent info night, or for sure kind of that first conference that you have with families if they're not connected yet, that's even another good face-to-face -face time. I wanna take a moment here too while I'm in the class and I wanna to go to this wrench in the upper right because I'm gonna show you a little tip. So you might be saying, this is awesome, I've already connected my families, but you might have some families that aren't yet connected yet even though you've invited them and I wanna show you where to look for that. So I tap the wrench and I'm in the families section right here in my class settings. Now what I can do is I can go in here to manage families. So if I go there, what I love about this, it's going to tell me the families that I already have connected with the students. And then these are all my families that are not yet connected yet. So I know I want to make sure I get connected family members for these students. So that means I might print off, you know, the, the invite again, I might try a different approach and say, oh, I'm going to send the email link this time. Um, or I might just, when I see them face to face, make sure I can walk them through the steps of getting connected. So that's a handy um, tool for you. Um, you'll notice too, when you get the list of the paper invites, it will also say who's already connected on there as well. So you can kind of have that as a resource too. Okay, so that's logistically how you connect families to Seesaw. So I'm going to go through a couple more slides because I want to show you a couple of things. So just as a reminder, families use the free Seesaw family app or they go to app.seesaw.me. It is a different app than you use in your classroom. We talked about this. So this is just more for reference when you get the slides um, that it can be translated into all those different languages. Here's where they're going to get the app from. This is a, when you get the slides, you can look through this family app tour, little tutorial video, which is kind of handy for you to really kind of get a deep dive into the family app, but I'm going to show you inside in just a second here as well. And then we already talked about this as a reminder to make sure you send it home with the correct student. Again, I'm kind of showing these slides really quickly, not intending to go through each of these because we just demoed it, but it's a good reference for you when you get the slides to look at. The other thing I want to remind you about is that um, up to 10 family members can connect to each student. So keep that in mind as well. Um, before we go into some time-saving communication ideas, I'm going to peek inside our class really quick as a family member. So this is on the left here. I'm in the family app, and I'm actually showing this on my iPad here. And when the families get into the family app, um, they will simply, when they, when they open the family app, it will say, you know, I'm a family member, create my account. So the first thing they'll actually do is scan that QR code for their student that was provided by you, the teacher, on that printed letter. Um, then they will create their account. You don't create any family accounts. They do that themselves. And then when they get inside the family app, they'll have this home tab, which actually shows all of the work for all of their students, kind of just in one spot, kind of the latest posts from their students. You'll notice in the upper left, this parent has two children connected. Now, of course, these are just for professional development purposes. These are not actual parents. Um, but in the center is the journals tab. So if you have family members that you see saw last year, they don't have to create a new account. Do you see this big blue bar at the bottom that says add child journal? They just tap there to add the journal for this year if you're using free Seesaw. If you're using Seesaw for schools, actually because of the student ID numbers connecting their child's work from year to year, the journals will just appear for them. They don't have to even um, get invited. And then we have this inbox tab as well, which is where messages and announcements come um, from the teacher and they can privately message you, the teacher. Um, so I'm gonna talk and show you a little bit of that, but I, thought, I realized we've, we've already had so much time that's gone by. I need to get into some, to some tips here. So time-saving communication ideas. I love CSA because I have to tell me, I have to tell you that my three favorite time-saving tips, and I could have a list of about 10, but I knew we didn't have time, is number one, using quick notes for reminders for families. Number two, 
really quick audio newsletters that will save you guaranteed an hour a week, um, at least in my experience. And then three, you can use links for different signup options as well. So we're gonna kind of demo a couple of those today. So let me show you. So if I go back into our Seesaw class, what I wanna do is, again, I want to kind of just post a quick note to families. So I'm gonna go to the green add button here as a teacher, and I'm gonna go to send announcement. So when I go to send announcement, I am going to choose who I'm gonna send this to, and I can do it all students, all families, or families and students. This is for families, and I'm just gonna start typing my announcement here. Now, in order to save time, I actually typed my announcement. This is a for real, legit announcement that I sent to uh, my kindergarten families when I was in the classroom. Um, basically, kind of just a couple things that were coming up. So on Monday, have your child bring something, just kind of a quick note, nothing fancy. You know, maybe it's, you know, maybe you're in Minnesota like me and it's a Sunday night and it's, you know, we've got our first 10 inches of snow. That reminder went out on Sunday night to bring snow pants. So what I would do is I would tap send now. And then you're going to notice here um, in the parent app. Did you see just what happened here? I just went back to the parent uh, family app. So I have this red notification. So in my inbox, I have a red notification that showed up in the family app. So then we know it's from Mrs. Gadkey. I'm just going to tap on this. And when I tap on that, there is my announcement from Mrs. Gadkey. Now at the bottom here, I can send a message back to the teacher because they have sent an announcement. So basically, if you, the teacher, send one announcement ever in the entire year, that turns on the ability for families to message you back privately for the rest of the school year. And I can show you how to turn that off if you are thinking, I don't want that to happen. Um, but it's another great tool to kind of stay engaged. So I could type something back, thanks. Um, uh, she will not be at school, not be at school on Tuesday. Okay, so I'm just going to send that back to the teacher. And then in the teacher view, I'm back here. I'm going to see, I just refreshed, but I will see that notification waiting for me. So that notification is right here in my inbox. So I can see that I have one new message. If I tap here from Roberto, I can click there and then there's my message. OK, so I also have in this same inbox a notifications tab. So that's just is kind of keeping a stream of all the stuff happening in your class. But that's kind of where you'll notice that um, as well. So that was quickly how you would use a, the note. And one of my favorites, I'm going to go back to send announcement right now because I talked about audio newsletters. Oh, my goodness. Um, I used audio visual newsletters and I have to tell you, it was amazing. So um, I would spend for the week of September 10th, okay? I would spend an hour each week typing a, an amazing, wonderful newsletter and have photos and all this stuff like pre Seesaw. But once Seesaw came along, um, it was just amazing because what I did, and I'm going to show you here, is I would go into add attachment. And again, going into kind of these rich attachments that are available as options for you, the teacher, you have lots of options here. Now, I would typically do this on my iPad because it was, I would just take a photo. Um, but I would also do a couple other things um, as well, which we'll talk about in a different webinar, not to overwhelm you. But I'm going to choose a photo that I actually have from my computer. And this is what I'm going to use for my newsletter this time. So sometimes I would just take a picture of something um, meaningful in my classroom that week. And I would have my what I had planned out to talk about to families. OK, so I would spend about five minutes kind of just sketching out a list of topics that I wanted to discuss in my newsletter with families. Um, and then. I would record it and it would give the same information and context that I would provide in, you know, a full one page um, newsletter that I maybe typically would do or post to the website or post to my blog. But this took me, you know, five minutes instead of an hour. 
So I've got my picture. Sometimes, like I said, I would do this as just kind of a talking point. Other times I would create, I would use Shadow Puppet EDU and kind of do a slideshow of pictures with my voice narrating. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap this record button right now so you can kind of get the full effect here. Hello, kindergarten families. This is Mrs. Gadke. We had an amazing first week in kindergarten. One of the things I wanted to start talking about is when we were sitting in our large group, we wanted to really talk about how we treated each other in our classroom. And we hung up this cr crinkled heart. And what this stands for for us, so I'm not obviously gonna go through my whole newsletter, but I would talk about different aspects you know, and again, the total length might be two minutes, two and a half minutes, but I would talk about several different things. What do we do in math? What do we do, we do in reading? What are important events to remember? Um, so that's one way I would do a newsletter. Um, so again, that's just going to be added as an announcement that goes to all of my families. So I'm going to, again, can send this to all of my families. And if I look back into my the family version, which I was just kind of showing you there for a second on my iPad. If I go back there, I'm going to see in the inbox, I have this notification coming up. So there's kind of what my newsletter appears like there and I can press play um, and it shows up full screen. You can't hear the audio because it's kind of connected weird to my computer right now. But that's just kind of another way to, again, share information with families. You can also still type a newsletter if you want, and you can add that as an attachment um, or a PDF. So I actually have a calendar. So sometimes you might want to share a calendar with families, and you're thinking, how would I do that with Seesaw? Um, I get asked this a lot on uh, our various uh, channels where teachers communicate, so I thought I'd give that example. So when I go to the green Add button, I can go to Send Announcement. And again, I'm going to focus on families. So um, see our calendar for the month. Okay, and again, you can add as much as you want, but if I go to add attachment here, I can add this file and I already have it saved, a PDF um, that I created our September calendar. So we have book orders due, we're going on a field trip, there's library books to show that you know library is happening I could add a caption I could do all sorts of things I'm going to then send that to my family so then they have that as well um, as a reference they can print that PDF out if they choose um, but again that can all be sent through Seesaw so the other thing I want to show you too is if I go to the green add button and send announcement um, again we're going to all families um, the attachment link Okay, so I'm not actually going to walk through all the steps, but we get this asked a lot, like, what if I want parents to sign up for something? What if I'm having conferences or I need volunteers? I use Google Forms a lot. So I would um, create a Google Form and just share the link here, making sure that the permissions were set so that anyone with the link could view it. So they would just get the link through Seesaw, open it up, and be all set to go. Maybe it was a quick check-in survey, things like that. But anything basically your students can create in Seesaw, you can create for families via announcements and messages. So kind of keep that in mind. The other thing I want to show really quickly here while I'm doing this live demo is I can initiate private messages with families as well. So again, in order to do that, on the right here, you notice I'm on the, in the inbox tab. And I can initiate a private message with Roberto, for example, okay? So I can type the message here. I can tap here to add an attachment. Um, maybe I had a conversation at conferences and they're thinking, oh, can you, could you get me, you know, the site word list that Karina is working on this week? So maybe I would send that. Um, I could send that via a private message. So keep that in mind as well. A couple other things I want to show you. Um, a little bit about the translation feature. So I love this about Seesaw. So Seesaw can translate notes, comments, messages, and announcements into over 55 languages automatically. So basically what that means is that when you type um, in Seesaw, so maybe you know, you're typing to a family member, 
um, or they're messaging you back. So in this example, this parent, Beth Hawkins, um, her first language is Spanish. So she is sending me a message back. Um, she's just typing in Spanish. And on my end, when I get that, because my device is set to English in Seesaw, I will see the C translation button appear. So when I touch that, under this, you'll see it just translates it to English. The same thing happens with families. So if you are typing you know, a note to update them, if you are sending them a message, if you're leaving comments, if you're typing an announcement, they will get the option to see translation if their device is set to an, a language other than the language you typed in. Okay, so that, that happens for over 55 languages. So kind of just keep that in mind. There's nothing you have to do on their, your end. It just happens automatically if their device is set to a different language. I wanna talk briefly about journal versus inbox because as we get kind of start talk about family communication, Obviously, just using the journal in Seesaw is huge family communication from um, students posting to Seesaw. So I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of how I differentiate it. So my question that I often ask myself is, should this be in the student's portfolio? Okay, if I am posting something to Seesaw, should I put it in the journal? That would be if I want it to main, be maintained in the student's portfolio. Or is this really like a teacher message? And if it's really a teacher message or announcement, that's really going to belong in the inbox, which is where we were just talking about sending announcements and sending messages. So the, the journal is really for all, of those, all the work that students are doing. So students are usually capturing it. Maybe they're responding to an activity. Maybe you, the teacher, are posting you know, a photo of, a, of one child doing something. That, you know, in my mind could go inside their portfolio or their journal, because I think that shows shows their growth, especially when we're talking about students at the pre K through second grade level. Um, but then other most other things when, when I am directing it as the teacher, it's going to happen in that inbox tab. So this is really for teacher to family communication or family to teacher communication. So those things like newsletters or reminders or sign up forms or class photos those are all going to be going through the inbox. I'm not going to be posting to student journals there. The other thing to just note, too, is lots of questions come up like who can see it? Who can see what stuff is happening here in Seesaw? So just as a reminder, if your settings in Seesaw are set to students can see each other's work, so this is just like a little screenshot from your class settings, if that setting is turned on, families only see work their child is tagged in, okay? So that really goes, goes into effect for any way your class is set up. Families only see work their child is tagged in. Um, all approved comments from families are visible in the journal to all students. So again, if you know a student has posted work into their portfolio, into their journal, it's their science experiment, um, and their family comments on that, you approve the comment, all the students in your class can see those comments on that post made by the family member if you have students can see each other's work turned on. Families can also see all comments made on any work that their child is tagged in. So for example, if um, three students are working together and those three student names are tagged, all three families will be able to see that post and any comments made on that post because their child is tagged in it. Okay, so I just want to let you know that too. And then on the right here in the inbox section, announcements. If we're talking announcements, all connected family members can see announcements, but they can only see announcements that were sent after they connected, not prior announcements. So what that means is if you, as the teacher, went in and sent an announcement to every family saying, oh my gosh, welcome to Seesaw. But you hadn't yet invited families. When they connect, they're not going to see that. So they're only going to see announcements after they've connected. Um, the other thing is private messages in that inbox are only visible to the teacher who sent the message and the one family member and vice versa. They are not visible to any other um, teacher on the account. 
So I know we are right at our 30 minutes here, but I wanted to take some time for questions. And you might be thinking, Angela, I gotta go. I spent 30 minutes with you and I highly respect your time. So if you wanna scoot out of here, by all means do that. We'd love for you to fill out the survey that pops up at the end because we wanna know how we can get better and serve your needs. But if you have questions or things that you thought, oh, I thought she was gonna talk about this today and she didn't, um, type them in the question box right now. Or maybe you're thinking, um, could you explain this a little bit more? What questions do you have? I'll stick around here for a little bit and go through some questions. Just know that you are going to get this recording if you registered and we appreciate you coming to learn more about Seesaw.